Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I think this uh, debate on the various techniques of uh, improving continence for robotic radical prostatectomy are very controversial because none of them have been proven consistently. I think most of them are individual center opinions and the, uh, the results of these have not been corroborated with various centers. So I think it's still a moot point for you know, knowing which is better and all that. Uh, the technique that we use, I, I don't think I'll be elaborating too much on the technique because uh, Dr. Desai, uh, Anand Krishnan, uh, Dr. Alavat have already given most of the techniques, so it will be just a repetition. Uh, just out of interest, uh, we do not use the, um, uh, uh, the Rocco stitch in all cases, only when we feel that there's a very large prostate and there's going to be tension on the anastomosis, we use a Rocco stitch. As far as the anterior suture to the pubic symphysis, is con uh, to the pubic bone is concerned, we don't do even that. The second thing is, uh, coming to nerve sparing, what we have found in the cohort of patients that we have done the robotic radical prostatectomy is, I have not done even one, we have done about 48 now in two years, and we have not even done one case of T1C disease. Now this may be related to the fact that we are offering a lot of active surveillance to these patients and which is supported by a lot of literature and most of the disease that we see are T2B, T3, T2A. Uh, we, we very rarely see T1C disease and in these cases it is, uh, you know, because of the um, large tumors you have to sacrifice the neurovascular bundle. Yes, an attempt is always made to do a partial you know, sparing on one side. So I won't delve into the, uh, uh, you know, the technical details. We have seen three videos, excellent videos. But with this small presentation, I will just try to uh, assess how this robotic uh, radical prostatectomy has helped the patients vis-a-vis -vis the pure laparoscopic approach which uh, we were doing uh, prior to that. Um, so this is a single surgeon comparison of uh, outcomes for laparoscopic radical prostatectomy versus robotic assisted prostatectomy. Uh, we did about 25 cases uh, in the three year period. And in, in, in about one and a half years, we, this, this data was analyzed about eight months back. So that includes the uh, respective number of cases. Um, all records were prospectively entered into our database and a direct comparison was done for the perioperative, operative and functional outcomes between the two techniques. Uh, the different thing here was that when we introduced robotic surgery, there was a dedicated institutional evolution to a robotic based program with regard to hospital support, staffing issues and surgical caseload because here we had uh, separate nurses allocated for robotics, a separate team which we did not have for laparoscopy. There was a rotation, even the assistant would rotate, nurses would rotate. So those factors may also influence outcomes because when you have a dedicated team, I'm sure outcomes are better. Um, we had two surgeons who were trained uh, at Da Vinci Certified Centers for two weeks in the US. And prior to embarking on the program, we had Vatikuti Foundation mentors who uh, came to our institution for about 15 cases. These were excluded from the study. So this was analyzed in the December last year where we had a comparison of uh, uh, LRP and RALP. You see the bulk of them were uh, uh, T2 or T3, no T1 disease. The median, the mean PSA was very high compared to what the other authors have demonstrated and this may just reflect uh, institutional or departmental policy on what we consider to do, uh, you know, active surveillance and where we select to do, uh, maybe we are not that as aggressive. And the operative time was significantly lower in the RALP group and the blood loss was also lower, length of stay was lower. And we had about 25% margins for the robotic group and about close to 30%. These numbers are small, so you know the statistical significance may not be very accurate. But uh, a high number of positive margins, and I think this is related to the kind of disease we are operating on. Uh, interestingly, this is what we saw. You know, the, this is Somshekar had shown this graph, but you know, even after doing about 25 cases of laparoscopic radical prostatectomy, we were never getting down below five hours of operating time. Whereas with the with the robotic experience, the fall in the operative times was quite precipitous, and we've reached uh, you know, in, which includes docking time to about three hours now. Um, in two patients, uh, we of laparoscopic radical prostatectomy, we had a prolonged post-operative urine drainage, which resolved spontaneously. 
and in the robotic group we had one bladder neck contracture which was uh, was a, which was the clavin grade 3 complication this was our first case and i think it was a wrong selection because the first case we did was a post trp robotic radical prostatectomy and that guy eventually had a bladder neck contracture return of continence definitely uh, this was superior and we, we we have not been using any of the other techniques uh, except for partial nerve sparing that have been described by the previous presenters but we have found that uh, out of the 32 patients one patient was incontinent at the end of one year in the robotic group and uh, fairly good continence uh, rates reach and we very strictly defined continence as no pads required at all um, this again graph shows that the return of continence is much earlier with robotic uh, prostatectomy and this may be related to the, to the fact that we have had a previous experience with laparoscopic radical prostatectomy and whether or not it is purely due to the introduction of robotic is, is a moot point. Um, this is the basic difference where when we were doing these two procedures with robotic we had, an we had instituted a multidisciplinary team by institutional commitment, ded dedicated surgical team for nursing and OR staff trained specifically and an additional constant trained robotic surgeon at the dock. Sexual function has not been assessed rigorously in the initial part of the study, but in the early <coughs> results, blood loss, hospital stay and positive margins along with early return of continence are in favor of RALP and this is again I think been proved by a recent randomized trial uh, which compared laparoscopy versus uh, radical uh, robotic prostatectomy. Uh, this is basically a descriptive real world examination of the implementation of a robotic program for radical prostatectomy. Uh, confounding factor is a previous experience with LRP uh, which may allow a easier and quicker adoption of robotic technology but uh, Dr. Somshaker who has never touched the laparoscope uh, is a testimony against that because he's had excellent results without having any experience in laparoscopic surgery. And the knowledge of the surgical anatomy and the steps of the procedure afforded by laparoscopy experience could have accelerated our learning curve for radical prostatectomy. Um, so we feel the importance of a dedicated operative and anesth anesthesia staff and the addition of a second trained robotic surgeon has markedly improved the learning curve we have encountered with the laparoscopic radical prostatectomy with the improved efficiency. The first case of robotic radical prostatectomy which we did took about 9 hours and at that time I felt I would never want to do this procedure and uh, you know within 15 cases we are down to 2 and a half to 3 hours so this just speaks of the very rapid learning curve and this is being translated to the other surgeons who are involved in robotic surgery at our institution. So it allows more people to do the surgery effectively in a quicker period of time. Thank you. Uh, thank you Deepak for sharing your experience of laparoscopy and robotic surgery.